Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark Cannon. Bid you all welcome back to Gothic 2. Sorry if my voice seems a little raspy today. I seem to be coming down with something, so I need to record this uh, before I am afflicted and can no longer speak. Um, so a smart person would have played ahead a little bit and come up with a plan of action for this episode because there are a lot of people to talk to in this city. I am a dumb man, so I did not do that. The first thing we're going to do is head in this direction and run into another old face. You'll know who we're looking for because he turns to face you. Somehow he's got a sixth sense of when you're walking up behind him. I must be crazy. What are you doing here? Did you swim here? <laughs> That's one way to get past the guards at the city gate. So those last two lines only come up if you enter the city uh, by avoiding the guards. Now, I realize when we were talking to Lester, I went with a line that said that we recognize him. I decided that I'm going to go with a line that assumes we don't, just so everyone gets to see it. Uh, basically, all of that happens is the NPCs in question uh, talk about, you know, do a little refresher on uh, how we know them. Have we met before? Man, don't you remember me? I used to hang around in the new camp. The list for the mine. Man, we had a lot of fun. Do you remember Lee? Uh, he kind of downplays his role. He was actually the boss of the rogues, who were the uh, second sort of group in the new camp, next to the mercenaries. Lee? You've been through a lot, huh? Lee was leader of the mercenaries in the new camp. I got out of the colony with him then, just after the barrier was destroyed. He and his boys are now on the farm of Onar, the landowner. He made a deal with the farmer. He and his boys defend the farm, and Onar feeds them in return. I'm no better off myself. Tell me more about Lee and his mercenaries. What do you want to know? Nothing surprises me. Anymore. Why aren't you with Lee and his mercenaries? But I am, just not on the farm. You could say I'm our outpost in the city. We don't want the ship to sail without us. Let's wait and see what happens. A ship, you say? What ship were you talking about? It's on the open sea harbor, behind the cliffs. Lee and a few of his people really want to get away from here. But that could take a while. Why? You'd better ask Lee about that. If you meet him, he's got plans. Oh, does he? So, there's kind of a weird... Uh, it's not really a retcon, but nobody really um, draws a line in Gothic 2 between the rogues and the mercenaries of the new camp and just kind of interpret them as one group. Even though in the game, uh, joining the rogues led to you joining the mercenaries. For some reason, in Gothic 1, everyone talked about them as though they operated completely independently of each other. Uh, or for the most part, anyway. How do I find the landowner's farm? It's quite simple. You leave the seaport by the east gate and then follow the path towards the east. I can take you there if you want. As a very kind offer, I will explain why we will not take that. Tell me more about the mercenaries. Well, if you're as tough as you were back then, you shouldn't have any problems with them. Most of them are ruffians, and if you can't stand up to them, you won't get far. <laughs> if you're squeamish, you don't have a chance of joining them. Oh god, the pressure. So, he gives you the option to go with him to the landowner's farm. Do not accept that offer. Because he also will lead you to other places. The thing is, in Gothic 1... Oh my god, there's a DivX pop-up. That's going to annoy me all day. Um, in the original Gothic 2 classic, uh, the landowner's farm was the only place he would lead you to. So there's an issue where if you take that offer, and as soon as he leads you there, he doesn't give you the option to go anywhere else. The problem is, we kind of need his help in other places. So, like I said, do not take this offer. I, agree with I you must talk to the Paladins, by any means. What do you want from them? They've got a powerful amulet, the Eye of Inos. I must have it. And you think they'll give it to you? You'll never get into the upper end of town. I'll find a way somehow. Sure, if you want to ingratiate yourself with the citizens or play errand boy for the militia. Do you know why the Paladins are here? Nobody knows for sure. Lots of people think it's because of the orcs, but I think there's another reason. It probably has something to do with the old penal colony. Oh, perhaps. 
Hey. Now, if we want to, he can teach us some things. Can you teach me? Sure. I can help you become stronger and more dexterous if you like. I apologize. I have a habit of just skipping dialogues out something. of instinct. Because I'm so used to doing it. So he can raise your dexterity or your strength. Both can be helpful at this point in the game. But like I said, we are trying to become a fire mage. Um, but in the interest of... Basically keeping this character as a blank slate until the point where we have to join a faction. I'm not going to I'm not going to spend any learning points until we're ready to join one. Um, the reason I do that is twofold. Well, number one, if I want to play this again, I don't feel like going through the intro. At least I have that backup save. Number two is, like I said, I'm going to simultaneously do some other... Uh, do the playthroughs of the other factions and just have videos for their relevant stuff. And I don't want to have to play from the beginning again just to build up that character. So, we're hanging on to the learning points for quite a long time. Longer than I recommend you do so. But, that's just what we're gonna do. Alright. So, I figure, for the sake of the people who maybe don't want to go through the trouble of getting in the city the unusual way... The reason we did that, I really should have brought it up, uh, when we talked to him, you saw the pop-up. I think it said we got 500 experience points. That's quite a lot at this point in the game. A lot more than you get by going through the front gate. But, on that note, uh, we're gonna head back in that direction. Uh, I realized in the last episode I was pretty much rushing it towards the end. I meant to show you some of the other encounters that you run into. Um, if you try to talk to the guard and get into the city. Uh, and all the other means you have to try and get past him. Um, unfortunately just because I was ha being hasty I skipped that. Uh, so... Basically the options are, do what Lester said and... Um, try and pretend you're working for the alchemist. In which case, you have to approach him with ten of any kind of herb. Now, that's a kind of vague description, but essentially, herbs only mean uh, healing plants or healing whatevers, uh, fire whatevers, and the rare herbs, such as snapperweed, dragon root, and, uh, King Sorrel, which we won't have one of by then. And Meadow Knotweed, as far as I know. Um, now, somebody actually pointed out... You could try and approach the guard with ten turnips. And try and fool him with that. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna put the name of the guy who said that. Because I've already forgotten him, so I'm afraid to say. Uh, and the guard actually does have a reaction to that. Which is kind of hilarious. I'm bringing some herbs for Constantino, the alchemist. Really? Then you won't mind showing me what you brought. What? <laughs> what is this supposed to be? What's an alchemist to do with a bunch of clunky turnips? Are you trying to be cute? Get lost. But if you try to approach him with anything else or just not enough of anything, uh, he'll turn you down as well, as Lester suggested he would. I'm bringing some herbs for Constantino, the alchemist. What herbs? You don't have any herbs. Beat it. I'm bringing some herbs for Constantino, the alchemist. Really? Then you won't mind showing me what you brought. What? <laughs> what is this supposed to be? Well, I don't know much about alchemy, but who's going to use this trussed up bundle of mixed veggies for anything? Nice try. The second option is, of course, to wear the farmer's clothes, uh, which we gave to Greg before we even approached the guard. Uh, wearing those, he will actually call you, if you're wearing those to begin with, he will actually suggest that you are one of Lobart's farmers. Which gives you, uh, the opportunity to feign it. The third option, of course, is just to give him a hundred gold and bribe him, because that's what, uh, you know, that's all it takes. People's loyalties come cheap. Um... The interesting thing is that if you keep approaching him and trying over and over and over again. He never recognizes you the second time. Like, if you just leave and come back uh, and try a different excuse, he doesn't remember that you've already tried. So, even if you made ten different excuses, you'll finally buy the last one, which is hilarious. And as we've seen, the guard on the other side only accepts uh, a cash donation to let you inside. Anyway, we're gonna head in that direction. Hey! I don't know you! What do you want here? Are you headed for the tavern? No, I was just strolling past. 
No, I'm not headed for the tavern. Yeah, that's what I would have said. But that isn't important, and that's why we can get straight down to business. Since you're new here, I'll make you an offer. You give me 50 gold pieces and you can go. That's your entrance fee for the tavern. Beg your pardon? But I don't want to go to the tavern. You know, sooner or later, everyone wants to go into the tavern. So you can pay right now. Then you'll have it over with. Forget it. You won't get a single coin. Then I'll take everything you have. As soon as you're lying on the ground in front of me. Is that how it's gonna work? So, I guess this is a good opportunity to really show you how one-on-one -on -one fights with NPCs work early on in the game. You'll see that a lot of the NPCs you encounter this early on love to do these charging crazy swings, which are hilariously easy to sidestep. Now, Mo, if you just tried to take him on toe-to-toe, -to -toe, is actually a quite a tough customer. Well, this is all you need to do, and as long as you keep strafing, you can actually land quite a few hits on his back before he can even turn around. And now, don't stop now. And uh, if he does manage to turn and face now. you, just start backing up immediately to make sure he can't hit you. Finish him. And then he'll start doing the wild, crazy swings again. Finish him. Don't forget to parry if you do uh, do get caught off guard. Now, very important. Do not have your weapon in your hand after you knock somebody down. If you try and interact with them there, you will stab him to death instead, in front of witnesses, who will immediately try and kill you. So it's very important. If the, enemy, if the uh, NPC doesn't drop dead as soon as you land the last hit, that means they are going to be friendly when they stand we'll back up. We'll see about that. That is actually a change on the first game, in which case, in, you know, which case you had to actually individually stab everyone you knock down, whether or not they were hostile. Uh, people who are not perpetually hostile uh, in this game, uh, you have to make sure you don't stab them. All right, all right, you win. What do you want? You know your way about the harbor, don't you? Sure thing. Why? What kind of rumors are floating about? Around here, we don't like people who ask too many questions. Especially not if they're strangers. Is that so? Why don't I see any militia? They don't dare come in here. You we know take care of things ourselves. You don't have How's to the shipping that. traffic? The only ship that's come here recently I is the Paladin you. ship. It's over there behind the rocky Who's ridge to the southwest. That? Eh, it seems like a landmark we'll have to look into later. So, a lot of the people down here at the harbor like to start fights. Actually, I wouldn't even say a lot of them, but you can start fights with a lot of them. Essentially, nobody down here really gives a shit if you beat the hell out of them, as long as you don't steal anything. You can take stuff off of them after you knock them down, but as long as you don't rob their houses, don't pick up anything that you shouldn't touch, don't murder anybody, uh, you can pretty much get away with anything down here. Uh, none of the militia hang out here. You might have trouble if you do any of this closer to the pier down there. Because paladins hang out down there. That we'll see later. But, yeah, pretty much anything goes down here. This is a, this is a very rough and tumbled neighborhood. You look a little worse for wear. Haven't slept in a long time, have you? Too long, I should say. Come on, step closer. With me, you'll find what you're looking for. Really? You got onions? Is that what I'm looking for? You said that you've got what I need. Does that include information? But of course, what is it you want to know? Are there any other traders here at the harbor? If you keep to the left at the quay, you'll find Helvor, my husband. He sells fish. On the other side, there's Brahim, the cartographer. Huh. So we got somebody peddling uh, pantry goods, somebody selling fish, and somebody selling maps. I guess that's uh, everything a homebody needs. Do you know anyone from the upper quarter? <laughs> if I knew anyone up there, I wouldn't be standing here, my boy. I don't know how we already know there's an upper quarter. Uh, there's a a bit of a like a bit of a continuity thing if you don't come in through the main gate and talk to everyone you see there. Uh, when you come down here, it's almost like you already understand the dichotomy going on in the city. 
What interesting things are there to see around the harbor? Well, if you're looking for some action, you can go down to Cardiff's Inn at the Quay. There's always something brewing there. You can hardly miss it. The guy standing by the entrance there will certainly draw your attention to it. He sure did. Besides that, there's the large ship of the Paladins, the King's Stately War Galley. That one's really worth seeing. You'll find it if you keep left at the quay and then pass under the high rock face. Everyone keeps pointing that out. I guess we really should pay it a visit. Has anything exciting happened lately? You could say so. It wasn't that long ago. A thief ran by here. He must have stolen a bow in the lower part of the city. Of course, the militia came here way too late, like always. He got away from them, just jumped into the harbor, and he was gone. Well, he take it to the frickin' uh, Atlantis or something? What the hell is he jumping in the water for to get away? Show me your wares. So all she sells is some bread. Fish, ironically, because she's not the fishmonger. And some waters. Alright, we're pawning this shit. We don't need it. Actually, I should have kept the pickaxe. Those actually are used later. Now, that was always a neat touch to me. You saw the way the uh, light post just kind of flicked on, even though nobody turned it on, so it's a bit silly. But it is nice that it happens as soon as it gets dark. What do you want? I what wanted to have want? a look around here. Then where exactly are you headed? What interesting things are there to see here? There's a, a cat house here in a tavern. The landlord's name is Cardiff. If it's information you want, he'll be the right person to talk to. Do you, uh, need money, by the way? Maybe. Are you giving it away? No, but right across the street here is the uh, house of Lamar, the moneylender. I'm sure he'll give you a few gold pieces. Just go ahead. Oh, will he? Do you work for Lamar? Hmm, smart kid. Well, you really are selling his services with great enthusiasm. Actually, I was on my way to the upper quarter. <laughs> yeah, right. And I was about to board his ship and have it taken to the king for an audience. People like you and me haven't been allowed in the upper quarter since the paladins came. Are you a citizen of this town? If you mean do I live here, yeah. But still they won't let me into the upper quarter. Mm, only the Toths can get in there are the merchants and craftsmen from the lower end of town. The people from the harbor district don't carry much weight in Corinnus. There isn't even a regular militia patrol down here. Man, this really is the pits. So it's getting dark. I actually didn't mean for it to get so dark so soon. Hey, you wait. Uh, you look familiar to me. What do you want? I've seen your face before somewhere, right? Here. We found this picture on some bandits we picked up a few days ago. It looks a lot like you. Apparently, those guys were looking for you. Now, I've talked this over a lot. And I've actually tried to prove it once, only to figure out that uh, it's, it's such an obscure circumstance. But there is a possibility where if you choose this second option, it can get you into some trouble later. And the easiest way to avoid something that's very hard to encounter is just choose this option. Gee, I'd never have thought of that myself. Very funny. What did those guys want from you? Ask them yourself. You've got them safely locked up, haven't you? No, they're dead. I guess we'll never know then. If you're in some kind of trouble, go talk to Lord Andre. Maybe he can help you. You'll find him in the barracks. No, we never actually looked at this. This is the uh, this is the wanted poster he was talking about. He actually handed it to us. I mean, I'll be honest. I think the uh, I think the portrait embellishes our uh, handsome details a little bit. But no matter. So, had you gone in through the gate here, obviously this would have been the first person you encounter. And he will actually stand here day and night, rain and shine, until you talk to him. Halt, stranger. I didn't see you come through this gate. And? 
and the guards on the other gate have orders not to let any unknown persons into the city. Well... I shall have to have a word with those two. But now for us two. I am Lothar, paladin of the king and humble servant of Innos, your lord. I didn't vote Our for him. Our commander, Lord Hagen, has entrusted me with the task of explaining to all newcomers the new laws which apply to all inhabitants of the city. Since people have started simply vanishing all over this town, everyone needs to watch out that they don't suffer the same fate. Once again, you notice his inflection on that line was totally different. That's because that came with the uh, expansion. The townspeople are simply disappearing? Yes, it seems to be more every day. It's most annoying that the militia have still not been able to discover what's behind these strange occurrences. Small wonder that the town's inhabitants are very wary of strangers right now. So don't provoke them when you're in town, understood? I would think if you're trying to prevent a panic, maybe don't tell everybody you come across that people are vanishing left and right. Now if you try to leave just, uh, if you try to leave just now, it's actually kind of funny. I've got to go. Wait! You don't know the new laws of the city yet. Later. So, if we don't listen to the rules, he'll just hey, keep standing you. here. And every time you encounter him, you can do it again. I've got to go. Wait. You don't know the new laws of the city yet. Later. <laughs> hey. So we can keep getting away with that, but whatever. We'll listen to it. All right. Explain the rules of the city to me. First, the Honorable Paladin Lord Hagen resides in the upper quarter along with his troops. That is why access to the upper quarter is allowed only to honorable citizens. Second, the town hall in the upper quarter is now the command post of the paladins. Only the paladins themselves and members of the militia have access to it. And third, whoever is accused of a crime must exonerate himself with the commander of the militia. Any questions? Where can I find the commander of the city guard? Lord Andre can be found in the barracks at the other end of the city. How do I become a citizen of the town? Only those with regular jobs will be considered citizens of the town. But don't think that you'll be admitted to Lord Hagen just because you're a citizen of the town. As a citizen, you have access to the upper quarter, nothing more. Only as a member of the militia will you have access to the town hall. Where can I find work? You'll have to apply as an apprentice to one of the masters here in the lower part of the city. As soon as a master accepts you, you are a citizen of the town. However, the other masters must agree to it. That's the custom here in Corinus. If you were thinking about looking for work in the Harbor District, forget it. The scum of the city live there. Don't even go there. You would regret it. Oh, well, already been. Now, I find it a little amusing that he acts like an apprenticeship is basically the only job opportunity available in the city. It obviously was a very popular one in the uh, time period that this game sort of was inspired by. But, I mean, there's other things we can do here. I mean, we can just be, uh, you know, we can work for various peddlers or, uh, you know, I guess deliver newspapers or some shit like that. Being a freelance boot black probably doesn't count as regular work in the paladin's eyes, however. How do I get to the upper quarter? Say, are you listening to me at all? You're not a citizen of this town. You can save yourself the trip. The guards won't let you in. The entire area behind the inner gate is off limits to you. Man, so exclusive, the city. How do I get accepted into the militia? By express command of Lord Hagen, only citizens of the town will be admitted into the militia. I see. If you want to know more, speak to Lord Andre in the barracks. What do I have to do to get armor like yours? What? You aren't even a member of the militia! You're not even a citizen! How can you even think of being allowed to wear the armor of a paladin? Only a few militia soldiers. Those who have performed extraordinary deeds have been granted that honor so far. If you want to be a paladin, you have a long road ahead of you, my boy. Now, I just have to point out, they pretty much emphasize that the paladins have only been here for a couple weeks now. That's actually something I need to touch on as well. Um, 
So for him to say that a few militiamen have become paladins in the span of a few weeks, it doesn't really seem like your demands are that high, to be quite frank. So it's just another case, and we'll run into this a lot, but another case where just the timeline and, like, yeah, timeline, I guess, just it seems to get a little confused in this game. Like, how much time has passed is never consistent. Where can I spend the night here? If you're looking for a place to sleep, go to the hotel directly across from the barracks. The paladins pay for the lodging of all travelers who come to the city. The traveling traders from the marketplace are also lodged there. I have an important message for the leader of the paladins. The Honorable Lord Hagen is not receiving anyone. Lord Andre, the commander of the city guard, is responsible for all issues pertaining to the common folk. Listen, the city is threatened by dragons. That can't be true. Another lunatic. We have enough unrest in the city as it is. And without some dimwit scaring people with fairy tales about dragons, I immediately locked up the last person who was here telling dragon tales and sent him to the Valley of Mines with the prison transport. So mind your tongue. We can't use anyone here who spreads panic among the people. You're the one telling everyone that people are disappearing. Somebody already reported the dragons here? Yes. The fellow's name was Diego. Diego? I think so, in any case. I warned him just like you. But the lunatic just wouldn't stop getting on my nerves. Hmm. <laughs> How unfortunate that Diego managed to get out, of the, get out of the colony after all this time and just got shunted right back. I have come to get the Eye of Inos. The Sacred Eye of Inos? How do you know about that? You're not a member of the Order. A magician told me about it. I don't know what his motives were when he entrusted one of the secrets of our Order to you. But he certainly didn't mean for you to get your fingers on it. But how would I you I don't want to hear any more about it. First you start with fairy tales about dragons, and then this. Incredible. You would think that the fact that I know about it would lend some uh, authority to uh, what I say, but apparently not. I've got to go. If I hear one more time that you are telling people here about dragons, you will be in big trouble. Do I make myself clear? Indisputably. So his line at the end there is actually different if you don't warn him about the dragons. Uh, he just says, as long as you're in Corinthus, you can feel safe. Uh, he told us that we can find a hotel across the city here uh, in order to get a place to sleep. But in reality, you can pretty much walk into any shop and if it has a bed in there, you can steal it. See this gentleman? He's not using his bed, so we will. And the funny thing is, if you um, if you are in the bed when the NPC goes to use it, this is what happens. Uh, no, I guess it's not what happens. Huh, does he never use his bed? I don't think he does. That's interesting. Is he gonna use his bed? Well, I'll use his bed to demonstrate. What the hell? Oh, just use the other bed! Alright. Oh, jeez. That guy's kind enough to let me uh, crash in here, I guess. Yeah, he just uses the other one. <laughs> just lets a stranger come in here and sleep in his bed. Like, oh, I guess I'll just, uh... I guess I'll just sleep in this one tonight. It's like the wife putting them out in the doghouse. Anyway, um, while we're in this neck of the woods, figured I'd talk over one last arguably possible way to get into the city. One that I've never gotten to work. But uh, I think a comment from someone recently suggested that this was only possible in classic Gothic 2. Oh, hang on, it's over here. It seems like an obvious way to get in. But it no longer actually seems to work. Because it looks like he can grab that. We obviously clear it, but he just won't grab it. It seems like it's a little bit too high. I apologize for the uh, flickering there. Something going on with the widescreen, I guess. Um, I swear you could do that. And in fact, there's a there's a mod for this game called Vilea Tale of a Warrior. Where they specifically put up like a sign here. Um... 
to make this even less accessible. So it seems like it was possible at one point. Somehow it got patched out, or it's an issue with uh, frame rate, which is something I've heard before. The other technique I've heard is that it's supposedly possible to drop one of these digger meats down, pretty much stand on it. But I've never seen that actually demonstrated to be able to tell you how it's supposed to work. Oh, hang on, did we get it? My goodness, we got it. Okay, there's the final option. I have never gotten that to work before, but here you go. That's your last way to get into the city. It's very annoying how that landscape just disappears. But there you go. Now I think we've covered effectively all the bases. Now one thing I want to test... I just want to know exactly when Lobart um, stops nagging you for stealing his clothes. I'm just wondering if it's a matter of getting into the city, or perhaps a little bit later. So we'll grab these berries here. And yeah, berries do not count as the herbs you need to get into the city. I tested that as well. well we're gonna see if he's still mad. Yeah, he's still mad. All right. So that's not the uh, that's not the solution. And if you don't have the clothes anymore, he'll still attack you for getting rid of them. So don't do that. We shall avoid him for now. I know for a fact that um, he will stop bringing it up in at some point in chapter one, because if you join the militia, you actually get a quest that involves him. So he obviously can't still be pissed at you by then. So. Oh. What is it? You aren't getting in here, my boy. Beg your pardon? Why not? Looking the way you do, you're sure to cause nothing but trouble here, boy. And we got enough rabble in the city. We have no use for people without money. Huh, okay. So I've never actually left and come back, um, through this gate after getting in the alternative way, I guess. Which is fine, because we I'm can still do this. I'm some herbs for Constantino, the alchemist. Really? Then you won't mind showing me what you brought. Mmm, looks good. All right, in you go. But don't cause any trouble. Understood? Interesting. I did not know that he would still stop you. I'm not touching that. Which is good to know. Where's this uh, stall manager off to? She didn't get that from me. My God, in public. You disgusting animal. You hardly know who to believe so, these days. you'll notice there's a lot of, like, non-named people you just kind of... Believe everything you hear. Well, he's just talking at your back, bro. Uh, there's a lot of non-named people just kind of standing around here. If you want to, you can talk to them and you get some uh, flavor text, I guess we can call it. Um, various things that give you rumors and a bit of lore and stuff, but... What's new? Not usually that Ever interesting. Ever since they took the barrier away, this town has been overrun with bandits. The paladins don't do a thing. Why the hell are they even here, then? Good question. How do I go about orienting myself in this city? It's not that easy finding your way around here, is it? Even the signposts don't always help. If you have a bad sense of direction, you'd better go down to the harbor, assuming you can find your way there, and look for the cartographer's house. It's right next to the tavern at the Key. Brahim will certainly have a map of the city for you. Yeah, that's a uh, that's real wise. Tell a lost stranger to go to the, you know, toughest neck of the woods. Go down to the mean streets. That guy's taking a long piss. So yeah, uh, every nameless NPC kind of has the same topics, and gives you a little bit of a different uh, response to it. Hey, you. I'm gonna interrupt this guy's uh, call of Hello, nature. Hello, stranger. You must be hungry and thirsty. Perhaps I can interest you in my wares. Wash your hands first, please. I was actually on my way to see the paladins. There's little chance of that. Since the paladins made themselves at home in the upper end of town, hardly anyone gets in there anymore. Can you help me get into the upper quarter? Me? Nah. No. I don't have much say here myself. There are a few people in the lower city who have enough influence to get you past the guards. Mateo, my boss, is one of them. Maybe you should talk to him. Oh ho! 
Where can I find Mateo? You're standing right outside his shop. Just go on in. He's practically always there. Don't tell this to anyone. Practically, aka literally, the man never leaves his house. What about the other influential citizens? The merchants and master craftsmen here on the main street are the most important figures in the city. You should try to get accepted by one of them as an apprentice like me. Since I started working for Mateo, the people in the city treat me with respect. You didn't get that from me. I need some money, and I'm looking for work. I've heard that Bosper has trouble with his suppliers. His shop is right over there. They say he pays pretty well. Is that so? What do you have to offer? At the moment, I don't have much choice. The damned landowner doesn't deliver anymore. And what we get from the small farms isn't enough to meet the demands of the city. Tell me more about the peasants' revolt. It's quite simple. Onar, the fat landowner, won't pay any more taxes to the city. Imagine, we're at war with the orcs, and that fat slob wants everything for himself. Hey, we're Normally, hard for the it. city guard would take firm measures in such cases. But now comes the best part. They say Onar has hired mercenaries to keep the troops from the city off his back. Mercenaries. The whole thing will end in a damn war, as if one war weren't enough. That was quite what do you know about Onar's mercenaries? I heard that most of them are former convicts from the mining colony. And their leader's supposed to have been a big shot with the king, a general or something, whom they put away as a traitor. These are terrible times. Terrible indeed. Show me your wares. I saw, I mean, he sells some basic groceries. Nothing we're ever gonna need. So that's the last we'll ever speak of this man, and uh, he'll go back to his business there. You notice a very um, distinctive gentleman standing there. Halt! No one may enter the storeroom! Why can't anyone enter the storeroom? The Honorable Lord Hagen has confiscated the goods for the King's army. That's not what I heard. Why can't the Honorable Lord? Oh, so he's got some good stash back there, does he? Are you deaf? One step closer, and I'll chop you to bits. That was a mistake. That. Why did he walk so far forward? Shoot, I'm in trouble. Oh, he got me good. I'll skewer you, bastard. Oh my god, he killed me. I didn't know he killed me. Got my own about that. Oh my fucking god, he killed me. I didn't know you do that. Bastard. How? What is it? You aren't. Yes, yes. I'm. Alright, <laughs> so that is a big mistake. So that's a bit of an issue with the NPCs who um, stop you from entering places. Sometimes a character just propels himself more forward and ends up so close to the NPC that, you know, even though they said you got one last chance, that counts as your last chance. And that's very annoying. Anyway, I'm not going to go through Rupert's text again. He told us to talk to Matteo. Let's have a word with him. What can I do for you? What are you selling? I can offer you everything you need to survive in the wild. Weapons, torches, provisions, even armor. I still have a special piece in stock. Double hardened armor of snapper leather, still unused. Interested? Do not buy it. It sounds tempting, but we have a better way to get some. What do you know about paladins? Since these bastards have come to the city, I've had nothing but trouble. The last time I was headed for the upper end of town, the guards flat out stopped me and asked me what was my business there. And? Of course they let me in. I had my shop in the city when most of those pompous asses were still chasing pigs with wooden swords. And yesterday, the bastards came and confiscated half of my goods. My god, you're talking about holy warriors with that language. The paladin seized your goods. Everything I had stored in the backyard. They simply posted a guard in front of the entrance to the yard. If I'm lucky, they won't take everything. At least they might leave the armor here. Armor, you say? Can you help me get into the upper quarter? What? What are you going to do there? I've got an important message. Well, well. Have you tried getting past the guards? I don't see why I should even try. You're probably right. I don't know how important your message is, and it's none of my business. But even if you told them that a ship full of orcs just anchored in the harbor, they'd send you away. Because they have their orders. Just following orders, that's what they all say. 
So can you help me get into the upper quarter? It seems to be really important to you. The question is, how important is it to you? What are you getting at? I can help you. After all, I'm one of the most influential people here, but it'll cost you. How exactly can you help me? Quite simple. I'll use my influence to see to it that one of the master craftsmen here takes you on as an apprentice. As such, you'll practically be a citizen of the city and can enter the upper quarter. Besides which, you'll earn something while you're at it. Where could I sign on as an apprentice then? Basically, with any master here on the main street. That would be Harrod the Smith, Bosper the Bowmaker, Thorben the Carpenter, or Constantino the Alchemist. One of them is bound to take you on. But it's important that the other masters agree. That's always been the custom here in Corinus. Oh, so it sounds like you're trying to blackmail me in exchange for your approval then. How do I get the approval of the other masters? You just have to convince them. Go and talk to them. But if more than one of them is against you, you don't stand a chance. So behave yourself. As far as I know, there's no way to permanently make a master disapprove of you other than Mateo. There actually is a possibility here. Uh, we'll cover that when the time comes. Why don't you take me on as an apprentice? I would, but the other masters wouldn't agree. I just recently took on another apprentice. Is there another way to get into the upper quarter? Perhaps. If I think of anything, I'll let you know. What are you asking for your help? 100 gold pieces. What? You shark. Take it easy. It isn't your gold I have in mind. But? In principle, it's my gold. Gritta, the carpenter's niece, hasn't paid what she owes me in ages. But the little brat is constantly running around in new clothes. That means she has the money. I'd like to beat it out of her. But Master Thorben, Damn. the carpenter, is also a very influential man. Get me the money and I'll help you. This guy... Just dirty. Where can I find this Gritta? Like I said, she's the carpenter's niece. His house is down the street, the last house on the right before the smithy. Help me sign on as an apprentice with one of the masters. One thing at a time. First fulfill your part of the deal and bring me the gold. Alright, we'll get to that. So I'm probably not going to do the apprenticeship bit today. Because I'm trying to keep these videos about an hour. All this chat already has gotten us to 42 minutes, so... It's not what I heard. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be slow going while we get through the city. I hope y'all can bear with it, but as I said, this is an in-depth, very lengthy walkthrough. Now, as usual, I just kind of got ahead of myself. We're climbing up on this wall because we know that Mateo has some armor in that store storage area back there. And obviously that guard will not let us simply waltz in there. Uh, if we join the militia, we can actually get access to that. But otherwise, we cannot. So... Um, somebody later on will give us some advice on how to get in there, but it's advice that costs a bit to do so. And I have a freeway. It's very tricky to make that jump. You have to turn and jump at the same time, just to make sure you get enough momentum to clear it. Normally I don't make it on the first shot, so I'm quite proud of, my, pr pr proud of myself. Anyway, we can get down here. Now. As long as you don't get too close to that guy, he won't know you're here. You can save if you're nervous. Both of these chests have something in them. We have some leather armor, a bunch of torches, a bunch of hammers, and some mandibles. And this one... Have a, some flasks, some sausages, and a bunch of clothes, which is interesting. So I guess this was, uh... Everything the militia really needed for the cause. Bunch of... You know, basic... Clothing. And this is, is pretty stylish. You can wear these if you want. They do actually offer some armor value. I think they're equivalent to the farmer's clothes, which is hilarious. But what we're interested in is this. The leather armor, which is... Some of the best armor... Actually, I think... Well, the best factionless armor. There is one that is technically fac factionless. But we can't get it for quite a while. 
Um, the interesting thing is these clothes, you cannot get these in Gothic 2 Classic. That chest was actually permanently locked. Even You couldn't even get a key to open it. Um, but for some reason, they unlocked it in this version. But no matter, the armor is what we really wanted, and that's what we got. Now, I think before we talk to any of the other masters and figure out what's going on here, we should um, go ahead with uh, Cavalorn's favor, who told us to bring his letter, which we did not open, by the way. We kept the seal intact. He told us to look for Vatras, the water mage in the city, who was preaching at a shrine. Uh, which is pretty much in the middle of town here, and he will make himself known as you approach. But there, where Adonis stood, was a place in which Enos and Beliar had no power. So all day he does this preach here, and I'm actually going to pause it because he just keeps going on and on and on. It's actually a complete story told in an endless loop, without a really clear place on where it begins or ends. Um, but... Yeah, he just spends all day from, like, dusk till dawn telling the story. And I think in my last walkthrough, I actually sat here and listened to the whole thing. I'm not going to make you sit through that this time. Uh, just go ahead and listen to it on your own time. It's a fairly interesting story, but it's all about the, um, the, basically how the world was created and how Innos and Beliar kind of stuck their dicks in it and screwed everything up. But we just need to have a God word with man. be with you. Who are you? I am Vatras, a servant of Adonis, the guardian of the divine and earthly equilibrium. What can I do for you? Here, I've got a letter for you. For me? Indeed. This is an important message you are bringing me. I wonder how you got hold of this letter. I got it from Cavalorn, the hunter. Cavalorn? Where is he? He told me to tell you he couldn't make it and is headed for the meeting point. Whatever he meant by that. I see that you have gained Cavalorn's trust. That speaks in your favor. Tell me about the Ring of Water. And why would I do that? Cavalorn sent me to you. And what did he tell you? He said you're in dire need of more good people. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you want to join us, son? I want to join the Ring of Water. You do? Well, that means you have already fulfilled the first requirement. What do you mean by that? I mean there must be someone among us who trusts you. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know about it. But I know nothing about you at all. What do you want to know? Well, you could tell me where you come from and why you have come to the city. I carry an important message for the leader of the Paladins. What is this message? Now, you will get stuck in the loop here if you ever try and lie to this dude. He sees right through you. And it'll just keep going in a circle over and over and over again. Because joining the uh, Ring of Water is actually mandatory to complete the game. And he won't let you join until you tell him exactly who you are. So you can go ahead and try and be vague with him and waste his time, but... Uh, I mean, dude stands here preaching the same story all day. He's got nothing but time. He can wait. So just be frank with him. Get it over with. A large army is gathering as we talk, led by dragons and determined to conquer the country. Dragons? You speak of beings which until now have only been mentioned in legends. How do you know this? Zardas, the magician, told me. He sent me to warn the paladins. The necromancer? So he lives, and he sent you. Who are you really? Now, Zardas told us not to tell any mages that he was around, but, uh... Mages all know it anyway, like I said earlier. I'm a former convict from the penal colony of Carinus. Good. Let us summarize. Fasen zero. I don't know what prisoner. that said who has been told by Zardas, the necromancer, that dragons have come to conquer the country, and you have come to report this to the paladins. That all sounds rather fantastic, but I cannot perceive that you are lying to me. Therefore, I must assume that your motives are honorable. 
I want to give you a chance to join the Ring of Water. Now, in Gothic 1, that whole exchange happened if you tried to ask for his blessing, which is uh, part of another quest later. And if you lied to him twice, he would actually just straight up refuse to ever give it to you. Which is a problem. That's actually the second way you could fail his, uh... Fail to get an apprenticeship, which I didn't even think to try out. But we'll worry about that later. What must I do in order to join the ring? Know that you take on great responsibility by joining the ring. I do not let just anyone join who comes to us and asks. If you want to join the ring, you will have to prove that you act like one of us. And that means... Before we let a young man join our ranks, he must have done a great deed for the ring. Only then can I begin to consider letting you help preserve the balance of forces on this island. I think all we've ever done is upset the forces, but... I have vanquished the Sleeper. Isn't that a great enough deed? My ears hear many a tale these days, including the story about the banning of the beast called the Sleeper. I have not heard that this was achieved by a single man, although your eyes tell me that you are convinced you did this. That confuses me slightly. But I cannot be sure that my senses might not deceive me sometimes. Jeez, you trusted everything else we said. I have freed many people. The barrier is gone. Even if you can really claim responsibility for that, the great event in the Valley of Mines has not only set free the water mages and other upright citizens. All the criminals of the entire country are roaming Corinus these days, harassing the population. The bandits have already taken over large areas of land outside the city. It has become all but impossible to leave the town and return unharmed. Oh geez, maybe we shouldn't have tried to claim credit for that then. Because all we did was take the blame. So what would be an appropriate deed that might convince you? Corinus is facing a great enigma these days. The number of people missing from the town seems to increase almost daily. If you can explain to me what happened to them, you shall have your place within the Ring of Water. However... Yes? You should take your message to the Paladins first. I consider it a matter of utmost importance. Talk to Lord Hagen. But Lord Hagen is not going to receive me. Yes, he will. No doubt about it. Provided you become a member of a powerful community first. The Ring has far-reaching connections. We shall assist you in conveying your message as soon as possible. You should talk about this to Laris, whom I trust. Larry! He will help you. Oh, good old Larry. Of course he's involved. What community should I join? There are only three communities that have enough influence. These are the city militia, the monastery of the fire magicians, and the troop of mercenaries on the landowner's farm. The choice is yours, son. Laris can certainly assist you with this difficult decision. Talk to him about it. I actually find it interesting that the uh, Ring of Water associates with the mercenaries. I mean, we'll find out the mercenaries aren't all just cutthroat bandits of sorts, but enough of them are malicious criminals. I don't know why the Ring would actually choose to work with them, other than the fact that half of them... Uh, used to work for the water mages, as we will conclude later. I shall do that. About those missing people. Yes? Where should I start looking for them? Most of those people disappeared down by the harbor. That's probably where you should start your search. So, you mean after all this time, none of you even got a lead to get me going? Let me tell you what I know. What have you found out? Nothing important so far. Then <laughs> why did I even waste this time? Tell me about the Ring of Water. Since you are not yet a member of our community, I cannot tell you everything, of course. But I shall tell you what I may. Who are the members of the Ring of Water, then? I cannot tell you that until you join the Ring. But you will certainly have met some of them by that time. Where are the other water mages? They are exploring the ruins of an old culture northeast of Corinus. 
we suspect that those ruins might contain a passage to a part of the island which is as yet uncharted. Ooh. Tell me more about Mysterious. that uncharted area. If you're interested in joining the expedition, I could send you to Satyrus with a letter. You can only participate, of course, as long as you're one of us. Of course. I don't know if uh, sending us to Satyrus is the best idea. What exactly is it that you do? We stand between the Order of Innos and the Chaos of Beliar. If one of the two sides should gain the upper hand, it will mean either total loss of freedom or deadly chaos. Therefore, we guard the balance between the two. That's what makes life in this world possible for all. Oh, it's always about balance. And what does that mean in concrete terms? The fall of the barrier has evoked numerous threats. The bandits are probably the most obvious one. Not only has it become all but impossible to travel the island without being attacked, there's someone in town, too, who supports the bandits. We have found out that the bandits receive regular deliveries from a weapons merchant in Corinus. We try to find such people and keep them from endangering the city. If you can find out anything about this, let me know. This is a whole quest you could miss out on if you don't go through this uh, whole exchange here. Which I actually used to miss it because this scene is since this just kind of repopulates Don't with uh, that stuff all over again. Uh, I never knew there was a quest hidden in there, to be quite honest. About this weapons dealer. How much do you know about the weapons dealer? Ask Martin, the provisions master of the paladins, about this. He should be able to tell you more. He has been tasked with unmasking the weapons dealer. You can find Martin in the harbor district. If you see a heap of crates, provision, and paladins, Martin won't be far. Is there anything that could help me with my search? You're a very persistent young man, but I actually can think of something that could make your tasks easier for you. I shall give you this ore amulet. You'll certainly be able to use it. It is an amulet of the searching Will-o'-the-Wisps. There are only very few of them. The Will-o'-the-Wisp that inhabits this amulet has very special properties. It can help you find things that normally elude the naked eye. You summon it by simply wearing the amulet. If it loses its power or you cannot find it, simply put on the amulet again and it will reappear. The Will-o'-the-Wisp can detect weapons. It could be very helpful to you in investigating the weapons deliveries to the bandits. Treat it well, and it will never fail you. Now this can be a tricky thing to use. We'll go over in a little more detail uh, after this dialogue. A will-o'-the-wisp in an amulet? Will-o'-the-wisps are admirable creatures. They consist of pure magical energy. They are bound to the magical ore in this world. It is their origin. It gives them their strength. I'm not surprised that you've never heard of them. They only appear to the person who bears the ore to which they belong. Sorry. Will-o'-the-wisps living in the wild have been forcefully removed from their sources. They will attack anyone who approaches them. There is no way to help those pitiful creatures. You would better stay away from them. Sorry about that discord sound in the background. I know this video was so professional until then. Can the Will of the Wisp do more than that? More than look for close combat weapons? Not unless you teach it. I think Riordian knows how to teach these beings. He is one of us, currently traveling with Satyrus. Perhaps he can tell you more. Interesting. Thank you. I shall take good care of it. I've got this stone tablet. Can you tell me more about it? Those are artifacts from the old culture, which we have been investigating for some time. There are several kinds of them. Some contain information about the history of the ancient people, and that is the kind I am interested in. Bring me all of those that you can find. I shall give you an appropriate reward. Now hang on to this for now. This is the one that we found in Zardas' tower. He gives you better rewards depending on the amount you bring them at, at, all at once. So, we need to hang on to them for now. 
Now he's got a lot more going on here. We're not uh, really going to go through all these. He will... Um... Oh, fuck, I look cool with this. Tell me about the gods. What exactly would you like to know? Tell me about Beliar. Beliar is the dark god of death, dark destruction, god. and all things unnatural. He is an eternal battle with Inos, but Adonos guards the balance between the two. Only a few humans follow the call of Beliar. However, he grants great strength to those who do. Tell me about Inos. Very well. Inos is the first and highest god. He created the sun and the world. He commands light and fire, his gifts to humanity. He is law and justice. His priests are the magicians of fire. The paladins are his warriors. Tell me about Adonos. Adonos is the god of the center. He is the scales of justice and guardian of the balance between Inos and Beliar. He commands the power of change. His gift is the water in all the oceans, rivers, and lakes. His priests are the water mages, just as I am a servant and priest of Adonos. Interesting story. Wait, if you see Laris, give him this ornament and tell him that it needs to be returned. He'll know what to do with it. All right, we'll do. I mean, we're on our way to him next anyway. So, the story of Inos and Beliar and all of them uh, are another one of those stories that just kind of seemed retconned because they were not really mentioned as part of any conflict in the first game. They were just kind of accepted as divinities. I really should play through Gothic 1 again to try and remember uh, what was said about them. They were considered to be the source of uh, the, you know, divine powers and the gifts in the world, but Beliar wasn't specifically mentioned as an enemy of mankind or a force of destruction in the world. They, you know, talked about his realm as basically being sort of like the afterlife or the underworld, just where your spirit went to when you died. He was, you know, his realm, I think, was just the night sky, essentially. And Inos' realm is the sun. And I actually find it interesting that uh, uh, Vatras just said that Inos is the one who created the world. I'm sorry I keep moving the mouse. I really should stop doing that. Uh, Inos is the one who created the world. But Adonos is the one who kind of upholds the balance here. And part of uh, Vatras' story is that he essentially tried to banish Inos and Beliar from the world in order to maintain a an equilibrium in the world so everything could thrive. Which essentially means he just took uh, what Inos had made and said, fuck off, this is mine. Which is kind of hilarious to me. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up was Cavalorn. Uh, Vatras seemed very impressed that we had earned Cavalorn's trust, which is hilarious because Cavalorn... I mean, we barely even knew the guy in the colony. Yeah, he was telling us all about the Ring of Water almost as soon as we saw him. And I also wonder, Cavalorn, how exactly did he get to where he was? Because the letter he carried suggested that he was coming back from the Water Mages, who are on the other side of the city, and I really should get a map to demonstrate it. They're all the way on the other side of the island, not the city, I'm sorry. Um, there's no way to get to where they are to get from where they are uh, to, excuse me, this side of the island to, towards Zardus's tower without coming through the city on the way. The only way you could do it is by literally climbing over a mountain. So how the hell did Cavalorn end up all the way over there before he even got to see Vatras? I don't understand that. Now I can't actually show you uh, how close Zardus's tower really is to everything. Actually... Let me do that so we can get rid of the fog. I want to see if if we can actually see Zardus' tower from here. Now, if I had the uh, view distance completely unlocked with the... Uh, what you call it? DirectX 11 mod, we definitely could see it. Looks like that big rock in the middle might be in the way. There's some tree coverage, but we can, we can definitely see it from... 
from uh, Lovart's farm. So it is absolutely visible from here. I'd have gone about it differently. Beg your pardon? But he knew that all along. I mean, really, it's, it's the only thing blocking are the trees. If anyone decided to come out here and start pruning, they'd be able to see the damn tower. I don't know, maybe I'm embellishing it a bit, but... Again, this is really not all that far. See, there it is. Anybody out here for a stroll would have seen those pop up out of nowhere. I don't know how the hell Lobar... I mean, they must not really look to the sky much, because... I don't know how the hell they failed to notice that. I mean, it ain't, it ain't a big island. I guess there aren't a whole lot of places Zardas could have hide, but... I mean... You could have hidden better if you didn't make a fucking skyscraper just to hang out in one room of it. Nobody will learn anything from me. But oh, wizards must be wizards, and wizards must be in towers. Anyway, before we wrap up for the day, let's go speak at Larry's again. Good old Larry. Hey! Really didn't deserve that. Vatra sent me. He told me to come to you when I needed help. So you've already been to see Vatras? You must have made a lasting impression on him. Otherwise, he certainly wouldn't have volunteered my name. Especially not since the matter with those missing people still hasn't been resolved. Tell me what you need. About those missing people. So tell me what you know. The first was William, one of the fishermen here in Corinus. One day, he simply didn't return. At first, we thought that one of those sea monsters out there had those eaten sea monsters. his boat for breakfast. But not too long afterwards, other people started disappearing from the town and the surroundings. Pretty random events, though. Everyone's at a loss so far. The way it looks, we'll just have to wait until we finally stumble across a clue. I cannot imagine fishing would be a popular profession if, uh... It seems like such an obvious thing that somebody just got swallowed by a sea monster. Isn't this a case for the militia? The militia is pretty useless if you ask me. They're never going to clear this up. The missing people have just vanished into thin air. So what's your business with Vatras? I've got this little agreement with the water mages, you see. What kind of an agreement? We work for them, and they see to it that our past in the penal colony doesn't get us into trouble. You're talking about the Ring of Water? You've heard of it? Vatras told me about it. You might have mentioned that right away. Tell me more about the Ring of Water. The Ring is to the Water Mages what the Paladins are to the Fire Magicians. But, unlike the Paladins, we operate in the background. The Ring is a mighty weapon in the battle against the dangers that threaten the people of Corinus. But this only works as long as we keep the identity of all those secret who belong to the Ring of Water. So keep this to yourself. My lips are sealed. Vatras gave me this ornament to bring to you. He said it is to be taken back. Of course. It's up to me, as usual. I might have known. I'll have to walk halfway across the island to take it back to the water mages. I can take the ornament there for you. Hmm. I think I had better take it there myself. But you could come with me. Only, I can't leave here at the moment. I need to keep an eye on the harbor. What exactly do you do here at the harbor? I'm doing what we all do. I fulfill the tasks the water mages give me. Some of the missing people were fishermen. They disappeared along with their boats. Where fishermen? That's why I'm standing here, watching the harbor. Maybe something will happen yet, but you could help me. Listen, I shall give you my aquamarine ring. It signifies that the bearer belongs to the ring of water. If you wear my ring, the rest of us will know that you're acting on my behalf. Get someone to take over my duties so that I can take the ornament back. One of us is always keeping an eye on the marketplace, but I don't know whose turn it is. You had better go talk to all those standing around there. 
Once the right man sees my aquamarine ring on you, he will let you know. Tell him to see to it that somebody else takes over here at the harbor. I want to join the ring of water. That's fine with me. But the decision about whether you will be accepted or not lies with the water mages alone. What did you do to impress the water mages? I protected them for a long time when we were still living with the barrier. And they have plenty of reason to be grateful to me. See, that's what I uh, brought up earlier. Larius was the boss of the rogues, and the rogues were not the mercenaries. The rogues did not protect the water mages. They just happened to live in the same area and kind of did their own thing. So, Larius taking credit for what the mercenaries did is... A bit of a dick move of his. What's it like to belong to the ring? We are very different from the usual communities you can join here in Carinus. Once you're one of us, we're not going to ask anything of you that you are not ready to do. The only thing we truly require of you is to keep quiet. We work in secret and do not want to let outsiders know who our members are. We shall keep an eye on you. Everything else remains to be seen. I see. We ought to have been through this. So, we can ask for his assistance in a few things here. I need your help. And what exactly were you thinking of? I need some money. Don't we all? Sorry, but I have none to give you. But Lamar, the money lender, still owes me a favor. Go to him and borrow whatever money you need. I'll take care of the rest. You'll find Lamar in the Harbor District, where it borders on the lower part of town. Oh, I guess that's the only help he gives us. So, I didn't realize that. If, if you want to ask him for anything, he'll only give you one thing. The best thing to ask for is actually the gold, because everything else he offers, um, you can get yourself. And I guess that's why the rest of them disappeared. If you ask for armor, he actually tells you how to get the armor that I'm wearing now. Uh, basically, his suggestion is go to the uh, potion salesperson. Salesperson? <laughs> potion merchant in uh, the market area over on that side of the city. And from there, uh, buy a scroll of sleep. Cast it on that guard in front of the storage area. Go in there and steal the armor. But my way is better. If you ask for weapons, he basically says, I can't help you. But we do want money, so let's borrow some money. How's it going? How much do you want? What do you mean, how much? I'm the money lender, and you came to me. What could you want from me? Money, of course. Well, lend me some money. Sure, how much would you like? I charge 20%. So, you can ask for 50 which is kind of a hilariously small amount. You ask for 200, which is what we're going to go for. If you ask for 1,000, he only gives you 100. 200 gold coins. That's a lot of money. I'll see you here again tomorrow, and the money too. Understand? 24 hours for a loan seems like a very short return period. You always throw your money at people like that? Don't worry, you'll be back. Otherwise, I'll find you and kill you. It's that simple. You've got such a distinctive mug that it wouldn't take long for me to find you. So don't even think about playing around with me. Wouldn't dream of it. You can actually shaft him later, and there's a whole bit with that. Um, as a matter of fact... Might not go back to Larry's. Might just hang on to this money. I was actually gonna do. That's nothing new. I was gonna show you what Larry's does, or yeah. Tell you what, this is gonna be a bit of a bit of a pain in the ass. Hey, we're gonna hang on to the money. But I'll just show you. Hang on. Hang on. About the. But I borrowed the money. Why can't I tell him that I borrowed the money? Oh no, I forgot. So, Alright, whatever. I think I already uh, messed this up. I was gonna hang on to the money and actually let him send his thugs after me. 
But I forgot that as soon as Larry's offers this, I think it basically prevents Lamar from ever coming after you. Hey, you! So, it is what it is. Vatra said you could help me join a community. <laughs> Getting tired of being the underdog, are you? All right, I see your point. I can exert my influence with the mercenaries if you want to join Lee. And I'm sure we can find a way to get you into the monastery soon. But the easiest thing would certainly be for you to join the militia. Which community do you prefer? As far as I know, he only gives you advice for one of them. And since we're going Fire Mage, we'll go with that. The Fire Magicians. <laughs> I bet Vatris didn't foresee that, or he wouldn't have sent you to me. Joining the monastery is expensive. Those boys won't even let you in unless you pay them a tribute. And the only one who could do anything about that is Vatris himself. You had better talk to him again about this. Uh, well, that was useless. So, if you want to join the other two factions, uh, asking to join the mercenaries, he'll give you a contact with the mercenaries who can help you out. Asking to join the militia gives you a whole sort of secondary quest to join the militia. Joining the militia is actually the easiest one anyway, so the fact that they offered a supposedly easier way to do it is hilarious hey, you. to me. So anyway, his only other options are to okay, let's go, go traveling. I cannot leave here until we know more about the missing people, or someone else takes over my duties. But he will not leave here now. So the rest of that is useless to us. I guess come the morn. Uh... Actually, the first thing we're going to do is go through the apprenticeship bit in the next episode, I guess. Just so that we have that kind of early on. There was a lot of chit-chat here. Most of it's related to the expansion side of things, but uh, that's just how, how we do. So, ladies and gentlemen, next episode, we are going to go through the whole bit about becoming an apprentice. I'll make my case for why I always make the choice that I do. But, until then... Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you kindly for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch. Subscribe to my stream archive channel. Links in the description below if you're interested in those. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you care. I don't really do much there, but why not? It's linked in the description anyway. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, gen gentlemen, gentlemen, have yourselves a wonderful night.